Welcome to module 59, Topological Vector Spaces. Throughout this section, we shall assume that K denotes either the real field or the complex numbers field, C. By topological vector space, we mean a vector space V over K together with the topology on the underlying set V such that the algebraic operations of addition and scalar multiplication etc. are continuous. So this is not yet a definition. I will give you precise definition in a moment. Okay. It's just similar to a topological group. More precisely, a topological vector space consists of an ordered five-tuple, quintuple, a vector space V, a set V, a plus operation, a dot operation, and a special element zero, and a topology tau. The first three, V, plus, and zero, constitute an abelian group, wherein zero is the zero element of the abelian group. The dot denotes a scalar multiplication K cross V to V. It's not from V cross V to V, okay? It's not a binary operation, it is a scalar multiplication. And tau is a topology on V. Okay, so they have some interrelation here. What are that? First is prior algebraic. The scalar multiple, you know, alpha beta of V is associative. That is the first condition. And if you multiply by one, you know, it is identity. 1 times V is V for every V. So, this is the scalar multiplication property of vector space, you may say. Okay. Alpha of U plus V is alpha U plus alpha V is distributivity of the scalar multiplication. So, 1, 2, 3 actually constitute what is the meaning of vector space? I am redefining it here. That's all. The map V cross V to V given by UV going to U minus V is continuous. This is similar to what we have done in the topological group case. UV or XY going to XY inverse is continuous. So instead of multiplicative notation, we are using now additive notation because we started with this one is an abelian group, right? So, additive notation is preferred here. So, it's u minus v, it's not u plus v. u plus v as well as v going to minus v, both are continuous, is equivalent to one single condition. u v going to u minus v is continuous. The map, the scalar multiplication, k cross v to v given by alpha u going to this alpha dot v, this is a dot that is continuous. What is topology? V as a topology. K is the standard topology, Euclidean topology. K cross V is a product topology. Under that, this, this map must be continuous. Okay. So K is taken the Euclidean topology. And K cross V and V cross V, etc. here are given the product topology. So, for those who know what is a vector space already, which we have used uh, several times, the multiplication, scalar multiplication and addition, they are continuous, is the easy way to remember that it is a topological vector space. Vector space in which there is a topology with respect to which 
algebraic operations are continuous. This is the way to remember instead of all this list here. Okay, notice that if we just ignore the scalar multiplication, what we have is a topological group which is abelian. So, in particular, all the results that we have proved about tau will hold in this case also, except that we have to carefully replace the multiplicative notations with additive notation everywhere. Okay. Now, what we expect is something more should happen, stronger results should happen because, because the existence of this continuous scalar multiplication. So that is what we anticipate and well, soon we will see that that is what is true anyway. So let us now recapitulate, reorient our notation, okay, according to these vector space notations here, all right. So A and B are any two subsets of V. The notation AB we use will now be written additively. That AB for topological group was all right. Now it doesn't make sense for us. So you should write A plus B, which just constitutes all points little a plus b, where little a and little b are respective in A capital A and capital B. Similarly, A minus B, which in the earlier one it corresponds to A B inverse, right? So it inverse is now here minus so A minus B, where A is inside A and B is inside B. So minus A which just A inverse is all that minus A where A is inside A. Okay. So these are the prototype of whatever we used earlier in the case of just a topological group and wrote in the multiplicative notation there. But now we have another multiplicative notation here, only scalar multiplication, namely a must be a subset of K and B must be a subset of V. Then we have AB, this makes sense. All points alpha dot V where alpha is inside A and V is inside B. So as far as possible, we will use uh, these Greek symbols for the scalars or T, S, etc. But A, B, C, D or V, etc. will be denoting the vectors. We shall dispense away writing the whole five tuple all the time. That is our standard practice of shortening the symbols, okay, notation. We merely use the phrase V is a topological vector space. With the understanding of addition, scalar multiplication, the topology, and the zero element, etc. We shall also dispense away with the symbol dot. No, even dot we will not write, just simply write it as alpha v. Normally, you know, you know, when you have a vector space, you write the scalars on the left, the vector on the right. Even that is liberal. You can use v times alpha also if there is no confusion. Okay, so that is also allowed. But if standard notation is to write the scalars on the left. Now, now you start doing some topology. Huh? Let O be a neighborhood of 0 in V. Then for any sequence of positive real numbers Rn converging to infinity. We have the entire vector space V is covered, is contained inside the union of Rn times O, where n ranges over 1 to infinity. Such a thing is obvious in the case of R or R2, R3, and so on. Okay. So, why this is obvious for 
a arbitrary topological vector space i will give you a minute to think about it so you have an answer some of you must have have an answer so congratulations if you have done it correctly here is the answer fix a v belonging to v i must show that it is inside rn of o for some o what is o o is fixed o is a neighborhood of zero inside v that's all okay look at the map from r to v given by r going to r times v this v is fixed okay r goes to r times v this is a continuous function why because scalar multiplication is continuous right therefore inverse image of an open set see v o is an open subset of v right the inverse image of open subset under f this will be an open subset of r what happens if r put r equal to 0 0 goes to 0 and 0 is inside o therefore u is a neighborhood of 0 in r then we know that if rn is in n is large since rn goes to infinity 1 by rn will be inside u right because u is a neighborhood of now zero what is the meaning of one by rn is inside u f of that is what f of that will be inside o f of that is nothing but v by rn so v by rn is inside o means v is inside rn times o okay that's all you see so the scalar multiplication is a devil here it is going to give you a lot of things which you have missed in a metric space. It won't be as strong as having a metric space, okay? But in some sense, it is stronger also. So in some sense, it's weaker also. So that is the game we are going to play. Just that's why I stopped to you know to give you a little more time to think about what is happening. The scalar multiplication is going to play a lot of you know role here as compared to just the additive additive is there additive, we have seen something about topological group but this is the extra thing right okay so such a thing you couldn't say in a in a topological group now i will introduce a number of definitions which will involve the scalar modification okay a subset b of v is called convex subset you see this was always possible in a vector space i am not doing anything else at the same definition no change of definition here okay if u and v belong to b should imply the line segment 1 minus t times u plus t times v 0 less than equal to t less than equal to 1 the entire line segment is inside b that is the definition of convex subset okay but in the notation that we have introduced it is same thing as saying that 1 minus t times b plus t times b is a subset of b so i have put an elaborate notation here because you may confuse it for something else for me, there is no confusion. The singleton T times B is the same thing as just TB. This we have been using, right? So I, I have used that one also. TB is nothing but singleton T times B. Okay. So that is all the shorter notation here. These brackets are not written here. But this is by definition singleton 1 minus T times B plus singleton T times B. So that is contained inside B, same thing. This is, you know, for each point here and each point here. Okay. 
for each point here and each point here u comma v so that line segment is inside b is empty as this one once you have convexity you can talk about local convexity we say v is locally convex if there is a local base at zero consisting of convex neighborhoods take any neighborhood of zero inside that you must have a convex open subset around zero contained inside the given number that is the meaning of there is a base the local base consisting of locally convex open subsets convex open subsets that will be called then we will call v is locally convex actually you should define it for every point but we don't need to uh, bother about other points once something happens at zero you can translate the whole thing any topological property which holds at one point will be true for all the points so that is the property of topological groups in general so it is true for vector spaces also okay note that this will automatically imply the same thing same thing means what if convexity at all the points of the local convexity so one point is enough for the definition like rn it's locally convex there are many topological groups which are not locally convex so that's why we want to define this one a subset a of v is called balanced okay this is something new you might not have defined we might not have met with this one standard study of vector spaces and so on okay it's called balanced if alpha b is contained inside b for all modulus alpha less than 1 this mod alpha less than 1 becomes crucial okay when you take complex numbers that will have different meaning you see if real numbers is just a line segment right complex numbers it's a whole disk so geometrically they will be they will have different meanings okay so balanced means that let me illustrate this one a little more because this is a new concept okay you should not confuse it with uh, something uh, which you may think uh, is the right one suppose b is a balanced set okay if b is non empty then zero must be inside b do you see why because look to look at this one look at the condition condition says that mod alpha less than 1 alpha b times alpha b must be inside b if we put alpha equal to zero that's valid right So zero must be inside B. Okay. Only thing is, I need to have some vector here. If B is empty, this is automatically satisfied. Empty set is balanced, fine. But then you can't say zero is there, right? So only non-empty have to. If non-empty, then zero is B. More generally, take any vector V is B and B is balanced, right? Okay. Then the entire line segment minus v comma v will be inside b. Okay. See, once v is there, I can take alpha equal to minus one, so minus of v will be also there. And minus v and plus v is there, you know, and you can take any other. A number also here between t and minus t between one and minus one, so all those multiples also there. That means the entire line segment is there. Okay, one element is there, then the line line segment minus with plus v is there. So this is so far I have used only real numbers. Next, 
if suppose v is a vector space over complex numbers right suppose if k is your complex number and v belong to b implies the same thing now i can take the entire disk d2 multiply it by v that is also disk because multiplying by v is, is a is a isomorphism is a homeomorphism right unless v is zero okay non zero vector you have to take if you take non zero vector it will be zero that is also fine no problem okay so the entire disk d to v is contained inside p okay so this balance uh, the balancedness the definition of this word balanced is an indirect way of bringing the open balls inside a matrix space you will see that balanced subsets balanced neighborhoods and so on they are going to play the role of the open balls in a hermetic space okay so that is the whole idea of this one so i have used b for balance but they are also you may say they are prototypes of balls in a matrix space okay now let's go ahead with some more definition now i am going to introduce another term here though there are no metric spaces we are going to define some notion of boundedness so this again another backdoor way of bringing boundedness though we don't have metric okay so pay attention to this uh, definition a subset b contained inside v is said to be bounded if for every neighborhood u of 0 there exists m positive such that this s is bigger than m implies b is contained inside su su s is a real number su is like a expansion or contraction of u okay s times that open set that's it the whole thing is i started with u as a neighborhood of zero so zero will be always there all the vectors will be stretched by s times that right that's why if s is bigger than 1 then it will be larger smaller than it will be smaller but whatever it is s is bigger than m is important here this is not a typo this is not mod s this is s okay real numbers only here s bigger than m should imply b is contained inside s u there must be some m how small how big i don't care so if that is the meaning of boundedness which is a very strange definition you will see slowly you will realize that this boundedness is actually stronger than the metric boundedness for a nonlinear space okay equivalently let us look at the other way around here for every neighborhood u of 0 there exists an epsilon positive such that delta is less than epsilon should imply delta b is contained inside u So starting with a b by contracting b smaller and smaller you can bring it inside u so that is the meaning of this boundedness why this is equivalent to this one you have to just invert it you see b is contained inside s u same thing as 1 by s is contained inside 1 by s of b is contained inside u so put delta equal to 1 by s so here also you can invert all of them and instead of s bigger than m it will become you know 1 by s 1 by m is less than 1 by sorry 1 by m is less than 1 by s right so this 1 by s is your epsilon and 1 by m is your delta so that is that is the way you can interchange these two huh? 
So this is the meaning of something is bounded. Okay. So let me give you an example here. Consider V equal to the complex numbers as a one dimensional complex vector space. Don't go for you know very large. Here it's you, you have to understand it. The only balanced sets, subsets of V are empty set, open or closed balls with center zero and the entire space V. So this, these are the all balanced set. No balanced set, they are open balls. Only thing is they are centered at zero. By translating them, you will get all other balls, you see. So that's why this definition. However, consider V equal to R2. Now as a vector space over R itself, not as complex vector space, okay, as a two-dimensional lead vector space. Then there are many more balances subsets, such as any line segment with center zero. Okay. Any line segment with center zero as its center means if you have to minus r to plus r you have to take. Okay. It need not be r, it, it could be line line, it should be lines passing through the origin, that's all. Okay. Or union of such segments. For example, you can take x axis and y axis. That will be balanced. Or x y equal to 0, uh, x plus y equal to 0, and x minus y equal to 0, as well as x axis, y axis, and so on. Star shaped thing, wherein all the subsets you take, they must be equally distanced from the from the center. Okay. So that's why balanced, the word balanced is just that. So attention should be paid specifically whether in the given context we are using k equal to r or k equal to c. Okay, geometrically they have some different meanings here. So in the k equal to r, it is not exactly balls. Inside R, it, it is same thing, intervals, but, but in, in J, R2, R3 and so on, this is something different. Okay. Whereas, convexity, it is same thing, no problem. Convexity does not depend upon whether you are using complex numbers or real numbers, because in the definition of convexity is only real. So, t times v plus 1, time, 1 minus t times u, where t is a real number between 0 and 1. You don't use complex numbers at all. So convexity is the same thing for whether you are treating a complex vector space or real vector space. So I come back to uh, an example of this boundedness also. Okay. The word of caution about the boundedness concept that we have introduced here for topological vector spaces. It is not dependent on any metric or norm. There is no metric or norm we have used. Everything is inside a topological vector space concept. Okay? Also, it is somewhat stronger than the usual boundedness concept in a metric space. So how to illustrate that? Maybe you start with a nonlinear space. That's a topological vector space. Right? Any norm in your space is a topological vector space. With the norm, you get a metric. Right? But the metric, you change it by using this rule. D of x, y equal to, here I have used only uh, complex numbers or real numbers, but we can do it for any norm in your space. So norm of x minus y divided by 1 plus norm of x, y. D x, y divided by 1 plus D x, y. That is the meaning of this. Right? then this is always a bounded metric, gives you same topology. So the original topological vector space will be a topological vector space with this topology or same topology, right? Only metric has changed, it is not a linear metric, it is not norm, okay? But 
if you use this metric the whole of r whole of rn all of them will be bounded because it is bounded by one whereas immediately just look at r and the boundedness concept that we have introduced okay it is not bounded in that sense neither in the standard runs it is bounded r is not bounded when r will be bounded take any neighborhood then you must be able to collapse the whole of r by one single scalar inside that neighborhood that's not possible because no matter how much uh, what scalar you multiply no matter how, how small epsilon times r is the whole of r itself right so r or any other vector space are not bounded in that sense okay so i promise that in the second part we shall consider another concept of boundedness for metric spaces which is even stronger than this this metric this boundedness concept okay so that will be called totally boundedness which is which is the name is quite justifiable so that will be done in only part two okay so let me have one more uh, simple lemma before uh, giving a break here for v belonging to v and alpha not equal to 0 we have the linear homeomorphism respectively called a translation operator tv and a multiplication operator m alpha for alpha m alpha for v tv so these are two two homeomorphisms okay of course if v is zero the tv will be identity but for this one you have to assume that alpha is not zero okay otherwise multiplication will collapse the whole thing it will not be a homeomorphism so how it's defined tv of u is equal to u plus v m alpha of u is alpha times v in particular for any subset open subset u of v and any subset x and y of v and k and so on you will have the similar theorem that we had earlier namely x plus u equal to u plus x here because this is uh, commutative y u i don't want to write u y because scalars should be written on the left only they are open subsets of v okay so this this is this is something which we have done similar to just the case of uh, topological groups only thing this is new because when alpha is not zero there is a multiple uh, inverse also m alpha inverse will be inverse of m alpha so m alpha is also a homeomorphs okay this is the extra thing that is happening here okay so lemma is obvious why because you have to just use that these are homeomorphisms so x plus u you can write it as union of little x plus u they are copies of u therefore they are, each of them is open therefore x plus u is open similarly y u is union of alpha u where alpha runs over y and alpha u is open because alpha is a alpha multiplication by alpha is a homeomorphism okay so we should stop here and reap the harvest of all these observations which you have made next time remember the definition of convexity balanced set local convexity boundedness these are the new concepts i have introduced so i next time we will you know use these things and produce many interesting results here thank you